In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a Minecraft server on your Mac so you can play online with other people. Before we get started, you will need to have Java installed to your Mac, so if you don't have it already, I will leave a link to that tutorial in the description of this video. The first thing we need to do is to download the Minecraft server. To do this, you want to go to your Minecraft launcher and you want to make sure you're on the Java Edition tab. You then want to select Installations at the very top and then you want to select New Installation. From here, you want to click the drop down menu under version and you want to select the Minecraft version you want to create a server for. In this case, we're going to select the latest version, which is 1.21. Once you've done this, you want to click on the little server link here, just to the end of the box, and this will prompt you to download the Minecraft server. In this case, I'm going to download it to my desktop. So now we have the Minecraft server downloaded, I do recommend putting this into its own folder, as lots of other files are going to appear once we run this server. So I'm going to drag and drop this into my MC server folder, and then we're going to open it up. Once we've done this, we want to go ahead and run the server. So we need to right click, click on open, and then you want to click on open again as this is from an unverified developer. After a few seconds you notice lots of folders and a text file will appear and this is because we need to agree to the EULA. So to do this you want to open the EULA text file and here where it says false you just want to type in true. Once you've done this you want to save the text file and close out of it and now we just want to go ahead and run our server again. So we're going to right click, click on open and click on open again. After a few seconds, the server dialog box will appear, and as you can see, it is now creating the Minecraft world for us. This will take a few seconds, and once it's done, it will say done here in the console. This means our server is fully up and running. Now, if you want to make any changes to the settings of the server, the first thing we need to do is to stop the server. And once that's stopped, you then want to go into the server.properties file. Once you've opened the server properties file, it will look like this, and it will have 64 lines of settings. Now a few notable settings you may want to change is your view distance along with the simulation distance. You may also want to change the max play count and at default it's at 20. And you may also want to change the level seed. If you import a level seed, a world will always generate with that seed. However, if you leave it blank, it will always be randomized. You can also change the world name here at the top and you can use this to create multiple worlds. You can also change whether it's a hardcore server or not and you can also change the game mode of the server and by default it's currently on survival. A few other things that you may want to change is the enable command block state. By default it's on off but you can turn this to true to enable command blocks and last but not least you may want to change your difficulty and again by default it's on easy. So once you've altered with your server properties you just want to save that and close the text file and the next time you run your server the server properties will automatically update. Just bear in mind though that if you want to create a new world you may need to delete the world folder or rename it in your server properties to create a new world folder. So now we've created our Minecraft server, people on our local network can join it but people from the internet cannot. This is because we need to port forward it so it allows internet traffic through our local network so we can play together. To do this the first thing we need to do is to click on the Apple logo in the top left hand corner and then you want to click on system settings. From here you want to click on the Wi-Fi option at the very top and if you are on a wired connection you want to use the network option instead. In this case we are on Wi-Fi. You then want to find the network you are connected to and you want to click on the details button. From here it's going to give you a router number and what we need to do is to type this number into the URL address of our web browser. We will also need this IP address number for later but we will come back to that. So what we need to do now is to go to our web browser and in the URL bar we need to type in the router number and this will take you to the login page of the back end of your router. So you may notice the back end of your router looks different to mine and that's because you are probably with a different internet service provider. However, the next few steps going forward should generally be the same. So in order to sign into the back end of your router, you'll need to look on the router itself and it should have the sign in information. If not, there may be a card or an attachment of some form that will tell you the login information. So you just want to find that login information and you want to sign into the back end of your router. So once you are signed in, you'll be taken to the home page of your router. Again, going forward, the rules should generally be the same, but it may look slightly different for you. So what you want to do now is to find the port forward setting. And to do this, you want to go to the advanced settings, and then you want to click on security. And here it says port forwarding, but again, it may be slightly different for you. Once you are on the port forwarding page, you should see an empty list of rules, and that's completely normal. 
What we'll need to do now is click on create a new rule and again it may look slightly different. For you, you may need to give it a name, so I'll call it something like MC Server, and then you need to give it a local IP address. The local IP address is what the router has assigned to your specific device, so we can recognize it. And in this case, we want to type in the IP address of the device we want to run the Minecraft server on. So to do this, you want to go back to the Wi-Fi settings we were at earlier, and here we'll give you an IP address. So we just want to type in this IP address to the port forwarding rule. In this case, mine is 192.168.0.11. Once you've done this, you'll notice a few boxes with a few empty ports. Now, the Minecraft server ports are 25565, and you want to do this for all of your ports. Once you've entered 25565 for all of the ports, you want to choose a protocol. In this case, we're going to choose both TCP and UDP. If you don't have the both option, you will need to create two individual rules, one with TCP and one with UDP. In this case, we have both, so we're going to click on that. And then you want to click on the enable dropdown menu, and we want to make sure this is turned on. Once we've created the rule, you want to click on add rule. Once the rule has been created, it will be added to the list of rules, and you want to make sure this is enabled. Now this is enabled, people can now join our Minecraft server from anywhere on the internet. So all we need to do now is go ahead and log out to the back end of our router. So now the Minecraft server has been created and port forwarded, we just need to go ahead and join it. And to do this, you want to run the Minecraft server, and then you want to open Minecraft, go to multiplayer, and then you want to click on add server, and then you want to give it a name. So I'm going to call this test server. And here it's going to ask you for an IP address. And this is what you will need to enter and all of your friends to enter to join the server. To find our IP address, we need to go to our web browser, and I recommend doing this on Google. And then you just want to type in, what's my IP? And here it's going to give you a box with your IP address. Now this is a public IP address, which is very sensitive information, so I would only give this IP address to people you trust. So you want to go ahead and copy this public IP address, and then you want to go back to your Minecraft, and you want to paste this into the server address bar. And again, you need to do this with everyone else that you trust. Once you've done this, you want to click on done, and then you want to go ahead and join the server. And now you're off successfully in your own Minecraft server playing with everybody else on the internet. Now there's probably a chance you can't break any blocks on your server, and that's because you need to be a server operator so you can take full control of your server. To do this, you want to exit out of Minecraft, and then you want to go back to the server console. From here, you want to type in OP space and your username. Once you've done this, if you go back to your Minecraft, you notice that you have now been made a server operator, so now you have full control of your own server. And again, you can do this with everybody else on your server if you trust them. And that's it. So if this video is helpful, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments, you can leave them below and I will reply to you as soon as I can.